right, guys, we're going to do our first lesson from our PhD Science Module 1 about the Earth features. So for this lesson, you're going to need your um, science logbook. It has the same picture on the front cover as you're seeing right now in this presentation. So if you need to pause the video to go get that, you can go ahead and do that. I want you to think about a time that you went on an adventure. Think about what made it an adventure. And I also want you to think about maybe something that you discovered while you were on that adventure. And what made it a great adventure? You're looking at some journal entries from John Wesley Powell's journal. And John Wesley Powell was a great explorer. And I'm going to share a little bit more about him in just a little bit. But I want you to, I know you can't read what's in those pictures, but I'm going to read you a little excerpt from a book that John Wesley Powell wrote in 1875 based on these journal entries. While I'm reading, I want you to think about if this sounds like it was a great adventure. All right, so here's the excerpt from Powell's book, um, Exploration of the Colorado River of the West and its Tributaries. So this was August 13th in 1875. We are now ready to start our way down the great unknown. With some eagerness and some anxiety and some misgiving, we enter the canyon below and are carried along by the swift water through walls which rise from its very edge. They have the same structure as we noticed yesterday. Tiers of irregular shelves below, and above these, steep slopes to the foot of the marble cliffs. We run six miles in a little more than half an hour and emerge into a more open portion of the canyon where high hills and ledges of rocks intervene between the river and the distant walls. Then we go, gliding by hills and ledges with distant walls in view, sweeping past sharp angles of rock, stopping at a few points to examine rapids, which we find can be run until we made another five miles when we land for dinner. Then we let down with lines over a long raid and start again. Once more, the walls close in, and we find ourselves in a narrow gorge, the water again filling the channel and very swift. With great care and constant watchfulness, we proceed, making about four miles this afternoon and camp in a cave. So based on what I just read from Powell's journal, do you think that that would be a great adventure? We're going to be embarking on a new adventure, studying the phenomenon question, what can we discover in an unknown canyon? So remember John Wesley Powell in 1875, he was exploring this canyon that was unknown. No one had ever explored here before. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Powell's life and this expedition. So here's a little bit of background information on John Wesley Powell. Imagine 10 men in four boats starting on a 1,000 mile, three month trip down a river through unknown canyons. Just five of the crew and their leader, Major John Wesley Powell, a 35 year old Civil War hero, would complete the expedition. John Wesley Powell was born in New York in 1834. In addition to being a soldier, Powell was a scientist and explorer. He led the first men of European descent down rivers through the Grand Canyon in two expeditions, the first in 1869 and the second in 1871. In 1881, Powell became the director of the U.S. Geological Survey and he was one of the founding members of the National Geographic Society. 
So we now know that this expedition through this unknown canyon was actually to um, explore. Be, he was going to be the first man and group of men to explore the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River. All right, you're going to need to open your log books to page three. We're going to think about what we can discover in an unknown canyon. And I want you to imagine that you're part of Powell's expedition. Think, remember, you're, this is back in the 1800s. So think about, you know, exploring back then would not be the same as it would be today if we went off to explore the canyon or the great unknown, which is what Powell referred to the Grand Canyon as. I'm going to show you some pictures from Powell's expedition in 1871. I want you to look at the photographs and record in your logbook on page three what you notice and what you wonder about each picture. I want you to list your observations about the photographs, the things that you notice in the notice column. And then any questions that you have about the picture, I want you to put in the wonder column. So here's the first picture. This is the Canyon of Desolation. I want you to take 60 seconds to record what you notice about this picture and what you wonder. All right, we're going to look at the next photograph. This photograph is the Canyon of, I'm sorry, this is Marble Canyon. So I want you to take 60 seconds to record what you notice and what you wonder about this photograph from Marble Canyon. All right, and the final picture that we're going to look at from the 1871 expedition is a photograph of Red Canyon. Take one minute to record what you notice and what you wonder about Red Canyon. Thinking back to and looking back at what you wrote, 
Some of the things that the students in class noticed were they looked at the boats in those photographs and the boats that they were traveling in did not look very sturdy. Um, they also noticed that the walls of the canyon were light in some places and darker in others. And that the walls were really steep in some of the places. Um, they also noticed that it looked sandy beside the river, on the sides of the river. But then in other places, the sides of the river looked really rocky. The river went all the way to the edges of the canyon. Um, some pictures showed a lot of trees and other pictures didn't have any trees at all. Then in this last photograph, someone noticed there's these large boulders in the river. But then also there were some large boulders beside the river in other photos also. And then one other um, thing that was noticed by the students in the classroom were that in some places the water looked like it was really smooth, very calm. But then in other places, like this last photograph and the first one, the water looked like it was moving very, very quickly and that there were rapids that the explorers would have to navigate. So I wonder if you had some of the same things that you noticed. We also had some questions such as, how long did it take to explore the canyon? Did they explore the whole canyon? And what happened to the other men? Um, there were questions about, was it really hot? Does the Grand Canyon in these areas look the exact same today as it did then? They want to know where the rest of, what the rest of the canyon looks like. So those are just a few of the questions that we talked about as we discussed these in class. Okay. I'm going to show you one more thing. This is a painting. This is the same picture that's on the front of your logbook. And this painting is by Thomas Morin. Just think about what, what do you notice in this painting? The painting's called The Chasm of the Colorado. And the man who painted this painting, Thomas Morin, joined John Wesley Powell on the expedition to the Great Unknown in 1873. So he painted this picture on a canvas that was seven feet tall. So it's you know, almost as tall as your ceiling. Not quite, but almost. And 12 feet wide. Why do you think he would have made that painting so large? And the reason that he made the painting so big is because he hoped to show how grand and impressive the canyon was by using such a large canvas. So it was pretty, pretty amazing the things that he and the other men saw while they were exploring the canyon. Okay, now I'm going to show you some present day photographs of the Grand Canyon. And we're going to do the same thing. So flip your logbook over now to the back of page three, and you're going to record what you notice and wonder about these five images on, um, on that back side. So image one, this is a landslide at the Grand Canyon. Record what you notice and what you wonder. Go ahead and pause your video and you can restart it when you finish. The next photograph that we're going to look at is lava flows at the Grand Canyon. So here's image two. Pause your video to record what you notice and what you wonder about this photograph. Image three, this is the east side of the Colorado River going through the canyon. So pause your video and record what you notice and what you wonder about image three. Image four, 
is a photograph of people visiting Deer Creek Falls. So pause and record what you notice and wonder in this photograph. And the final figure that you're going to look at or image that you're going to look at is of exposed rock layers in the Grand Canyon. So this is some exposed layers of rocks in the Grand Canyon. Pause and record what you notice and what you wonder about this photograph. We're going to take a moment now to reflect on what you've recorded. We'll talk about a few of the things that some of the students noticed and that were in class. They noticed how deep the canyon looked. And in some of the pictures you could see the river, but in some of them you couldn't. Um, another thing that was noticed is that in a lot of the pictures it looked like the rocks were striped with different colors. There were stripes in the rocks. Um, it looked like the walls are crumbling in some of the photographs. And they also noticed just like in the images from Powell's expedition, in some of the photos there's plants like trees and other vegetation. And in some of them there's no plants at all. They also noticed that in some of the places in the canyon looks like it has holes in the wall. I wonder if those are some of the same things that you noticed or if you noticed different things. So now on to the things that they wondered about. I wonder, has the Grand Canyon always been there? How was it made? How long did it take? How deep is it? Why is there a river at the bottom? Those different colored stripes, how are those made? They wondered if people dug for fossils there and if people are still exploring the canyon. Another question was, are there other canyons like the Grand Canyon? And are there anything in all those layers of, in the rock and those stripes? So we had a very good discussion in class about some of the about these photographs and things that people knew about the Grand Canyon. So discuss those with your parents and we'll do lesson two tomorrow.